So AI is evolving at a speed that is honestly hard to keep up with, but Kling 01 and Kling 2.6 Pro are the newest models in the spotlight. They've been creating shots and transitions that look like this. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the artless tools that made these shots possible, along with all of their amazing use cases. How you guys can use them to make long one takes, seamless transitions, product videos, dual dialogue, or even transition between your real footage. And I'll show you exactly how to get legit results from ideating to prompting the entire process. Because yeah, getting good results can be frustrating, AI can be unpredictable, but if you understand the process, you can push past all of that. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to approach Kling like a filmmaker or even use it as a tool to elevate your own filmmaking. These are some of the craziest tools I've used and you're gonna see that in this video. Let's get into it. But before we get started, let's break down these models. Kling01 now has start and end frame, which has instantly become my newest favorite feature in AI video. And Kling 2.6 Pro now has fully integrated audio, making both of these models direct competitors with VEO 3.1 and Sora 2. But before we get into it, let's break down the four videos that I made. The first one was a sci-fi long one take. The second was some product transitions. The third was transitioning between your real footage. And then the last is a dual dialogue scene using and cling 2.6 pro. All right, well, let's start with the one take of the sci-fi sequence. The first step and the most important step, in my opinion, is locking down the look of our image and our character. Locking down this image is gonna save us a ton of time and credits when it comes to generating because there's less guessing. It has all of the information to pull from. But the way that I generate images is I start in ChatGPT. I have them generate the image. I lock down the look a little bit. And once I find something that I like, I bring it into Nano Banana Pro to make it look really realistic. Adding shallow depth of field, realistic skin textures, etc. But once we lock down the character, we're gonna use Nano Banana Pro now to generate the different scenes. So basically what I wanted the sequence to be was some guy looking at a projection that's giving him like a high alert. He gets really scared and he starts running and then it's gonna go into the hallway to more POV shot and then it's gonna reveal like an alien monster thing and then it's gonna pan back to him with like a scared look on his face. All right, so let's take our first two images. We're not gonna bring it into Artlist. We're gonna bring it into ChatGPT for our prompting. And there's three types of prompting that I like to use. There's JSON prompting that looks like this. There's block prompting that looks like this. And then there's just typing into the free version of ChatGPT. And any of these three will work, but we're just gonna use the free version of ChatGPT just so everybody can follow along. But if you guys are interested in JSON prompts and block prompts and you have the plus version of ChatGPT, you can go into the explore section and type these up and you can find these chats that are trained specifically for these types of prompts. For JSON prompts, you can just type in JSON and the first option is usually what I use. And Rourke Heath has a very good version of the block prompts. So if you just type in block prompt GPT, his will be the first that pops up right here. But if you want more deep dives into AI filmmaking, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to always stay updated. So first things we're gonna do, what a lot of people don't do is bring your images into ChatGPT to prompt. This gives ChatGPT a lot better idea of how to direct the movement between the two images. Kling01 is pretty good with just understanding natural language, but you also wanna be very descriptive on how you want the camera to move and make sure you mention no morphing because it tends to morph things because it's trying to do like transitions, but make sure you specify that it's camera movement. All right, so this is what I typed in. Use these two images for start and end frame for Kling 01. I want to slow orbit and push into the right. There should be no morphing of the background. Just move the camera to reveal the different background. And hit enter. And this is the prompt that it gave me. You can pause if you want to read it. Copy that, bring it into art list. We're going to upload our two images. Paste that, five seconds, and we're going to hit animate. All right, and this is what I got. Not bad. Now we're gonna to go to our next two images. The second image is now gonna become our start frame. And this is what I typed into ChatGPT. This is the start and end frame for Klingo 1. Have image 1, have an emotion of slight fear in his face, then bring up the projection. There should be no morphing, only a slight camera pan to the right. But as you can see, you don't need any crazy prompting. This is what I really love about Kling. And especially if you have really good starting images, you can stress a lot less about the prompts. But we're gonna continue doing this until we have all of our images animated, and then you can bring it into whatever editing software and tie them together. There's also another technique that you can use 
used to tie things together. So you can generate the videos first from the images and then you can just screenshot the end and the beginning of those videos and tie them together that way. So essentially you would have three videos. You would have the two videos that you generated and then the transition in the middle that you would tie together. All right, so I brought it into DaVinci to bring them all together. Um, sometimes you're gonna get these weird speed cuts because the end of a clip is gonna be a different speed from the beginning. So you wanna go in and speed ramp just to make everything flow a bit smoother. You can add a color grade. I like to add some grain and this is what I got. Pretty cool, right? And this is just preliminary testing for me. You know, there's a lot of things I need to play around with and tweak, but this was just from like some of the first iterations that I got and the results look insane. But now let's hop into my favorite use of start and end frame, seamless transitions. So the first thing I wanna try out is product transitions. There's a lot of cool things I think you can do with this. And I heard with this model, it maintains text very well. And so this has become a realistic tool that you can use within product videos. If some of you guys don't know, I used to make product videos before this. So we're going to go into Nano Banana Pro and I'm going to upload the logo of Artlist. And we're going to create a random product from that and see if we can make some cool transitions. So I wanted to try something new. Instead of prompting with ChatGPT, I wanted to do something very simple and see if it followed the directions. I'm testing this out with you guys as well. So I'm just going to say seamlessly transition between these two frames and see what happens. All right, and this is what I got. Bro, oh, that's insane. Again, this just opens up a whole new world, especially because you can use real footage and generated footage. This is just crazy. So let's try and transition with real footage. This is something I've been dying to try. I have these two stationary shots that I took of myself, this one and this one, and I'm gonna see if I can actually have a camera movement down to the second one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the end of the first clip and we're gonna screenshot that. And then we're gonna go to the beginning of the second clip and we're gonna screenshot that. So we're gonna bring that into Artlist. We're gonna select Kling 01 and we're gonna use these as our start and end frame. And I'm literally just gonna type seamlessly transition between these two. All right, and this is what it came up with. What? Dude, that's insane. Holy. Dude, I film myself so much on a tripod, but to be able to transition and use camera movements like that is actually insane. It didn't morph my face. It actually, I'm, I'm speechless, dude. That's actually insane so i want to try one more thing i'm going to go to the art list catalog and i'm going to just take some random stock footage and see if i can create some creative transitions with that so i tried to select some clips that actually made sense for like a real transition and so i got this eyeball right here which i think would be really cool to transition to this like ball of flames and i got another one of this lady walking through a tunnel and then another tunnel shot but that's like to nature i think would be really cool and would be something you see in maybe like a travel film or something and then uh, we have this guy walking in the field and I want to try and transition it up into the clouds. We'll see how that works. I feel like there's going to be a lot more iterating and like testing around with what works, but let's try. So we have the eye and the fire uploaded. I think I'm going to try just a simple prompt again because sometimes it surprises you. And I want to see how far we can take this because I don't know if you know anything about me. I used to be obsessed with transitions. I used to do stuff like this. And so if I can kind of elevate that with some AI magic, that would be really sick. So I said morph the iris of her eye into the flame of at image two, bring in the rest of the image later in the video. Let's see what happens. Bruh, what? <laughs> That's so crazy. I didn't even use a complex prompt. And so if I bring this into the middle of the videos, this is what it looks like. That's insane. Dude, but you know what I also thought about? If I reverse that, I feel like that shot would look way sicker. Key tip, if you reverse a transition, sometimes it turns out even sicker. Just a thought. All right, so now let's try the tunnel shots. Kind of excited to see what this does. Took the screenshots, brought them in. Oh, bro, come on. That's so sick, dude. Oh my goodness. 
if you bring it into davinci add a little bit of camera shake you can add some more flair as well this tool is so much fun we're gonna try one more time just because this is amazing we're gonna do the one with the guy walking in the field i want it to look up towards the sky and then it's gonna be like a masking transition that'll end up above the clouds let's see if klingo one can do it for this one we're gonna go straight into ChatGPT and upload our images all right, so I said I want the camera to pan upwards towards the sky that will then transition to below the clouds that will then continue to pan upwards, revealing at image two should look like a seamless masking transition. All right, and this is what I got. Bruh. <laughs> That's so cool, dude. And look, I know there's a lot of pushback against AI, but this is a super useful tool. A transition like that used to take me hours and hours and it would take away from me actually working on the story, the structure of the video, the other things that really, really matter. Well, now we're gonna hop into Kling 2.6 Pro to make a dialogue scene. And we're gonna use text to video first just to see how it works. And so for this one, you wanna be as detailed as possible. I found what works best for this is using a JSON prompt creator. So you wanna go into ChatGPT. And this is what I typed in. You can pause if you want to read it. We're gonna hit enter and it's going to give us a JSON style prompt. We're gonna copy and paste that. And this is what I got. I loved you enough to lose myself and you didn't even notice looks really real for text to video no reference images this model is pretty crazy the skin tones are amazing now let's try an image to video with dual dialogue so i'm actually going to use the last scene to generate images for the new scene and so i'm going to screenshot this and then expand it with nano banana pro and this is the image that it gave me it looks super good and we're going to go back into chat gpt to the json creator and honestly i don't have any guidance for what i want them to say so i'm going to have chat gpt make it up for me I begged you to fight for us and you just gave up. I did fight. I fought every damn day and you didn't even see me. It's pretty good. I know I can make a few more adjustments to make it a bit more realistic, like just adjusting slight emotions, micro expressions, just their delivery. But that's the cool part about Kling 2.6 Pro is you have full control over the volume, the tone, the delivery. I mean, these are some incredible tools that have so many different use cases that I didn't even cover them all. I mean, you can do fashion edits, you can do sports transitions, you can even make music videos. But I'm just blown away by the capabilities and now the use cases within filmmaking to do transitions and add camera movement and different things like this to your existing footage. But remember, getting different results is all part of the process. There is no perfect way of prompting. There are better techniques, different systems, different models. But the best way that you can learn is just by going out there and testing and doing it yourself. Well, that's it. That's pretty much the entire workflow and all the use cases. These are some incredible tools. So if you guys are interested, head over to artlist.io and check them out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and we'll see you next time.